I'm so happy to hear that finally Tsunami has a, a dedicated day to raise awareness the, about the importance of uh, uh, warning systems, education and preparedness. What I have learned from my personal experience is that um, usually as a human beings we are reactive instead of proactive. Mm. But when M Mother Nature strikes, mm. you usually have no time to run safely your life mm. and life of your loved ones. Mm. And that's why having a warning uh, systems, having education and preparedness is crucial. Mm. Because uh, when Mother Nature strikes, we are so little. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't challenge Mother Nature uh, to, to see how fast we can run. So it's very important. And um, and I'm so happy that uh, the international community is participating um, now during uh, with the Tsunami Awareness Day. To me, the, the day of tsunami obviously was very uh, hard one and lots of suffering, but also uh, I, I experienced lots of unconditional unconditional love. People were ready to risk their lives for strangers to rescue them, and uh, the. All over the world, the community, individuals, families, countries were asking how we can help. So to me, when I go back in my memory, I, I focus on the positives. And there were many important lessons learned uh, about how precious every moment is. And because next second, something can happen and everything can be gone. Uh, about uh, the import that we actually have a choice in life. Because all of us, we go through hardships. Uh, if it's uh, being sick, losing loved ones. And it's up to us to focus on the negative or positive. And sometimes there's only 5% positive and the rest is negative. But if you can focus on the positive, you, uh, you can, it, it attracts more positive and you can um, become stronger um, and not just empowering, empower yourself, but empower others. So when I, look, when I go back in my memories to that day, I try to focus only on the on the positives and also about what we can do to um, to prevent such a uh, such a uh, such a devastation, such a suffering, and that's why I focus also with my charity on rebuilding schools which are disaster resilient schools. So in case of natural disasters, children are safe. Mm -hmm. After being uh, blessed and surviving and. Uh, with just broken pelvis in four places um, and after recovering and being able to heal again um, I went back to Thailand to see what's the biggest need and what we can do to have a biggest impact. Uh, we visited um, with my sister and a few friends temporary shelters, hospitals, um, temporary schools and at that time in met children who were sleeping on the bare floors, on the concrete, uh, looking not at you, but through you, with blank looks, without hope. And I started to learn that children often are forgotten after natural disasters and wait for school for two years, four, sometimes even six years. And six years is a whole primary school. That means the whole generation being lost. And we start focusing on uh, rebuilding schools uh, because they are center of com community and symbol of hope. And when a school is rebuilt, even if the rest of the community is still damaged, it gives a hope and strength to the family members that we can we can get through it. We can make this happen because school impacts every every family in a community. So focused, we focused on rebuilding schools and also their safe, resilient schools. So in case of the next natural disaster, children are safe and often those schools serve as a shelters. And uh, we had the big dream to build one school in 2006. And uh, today I'm happy to announce that we added 20 more schools and now we are at 150 schools in 10 countries around the world. Before I was holding onto the tree for eight hours, there were many other things which were happening from, because we were, my partner and I, and I, we were in a bungalow, in a beach bungalow, um, so very close to the sea, but uh, the view was into the pool, so we didn't see the tsunami wave coming. There was no early warning signs, there was nothing. 
uh, the only thing was suddenly I've heard screams and I looked up to the balcony and everybody was running frantically right left and next second the tsunami wave crashed into the bungalow and broke all the glass and water was filling the bungalow with the glass cutting us and then took us out of the bungalow. At that point uh, I saw my partner Simon the last time and uh, I thought he would be okay because he was stronger and much better swimmer but he didn't make it and nature does it, it, it at this point it doesn't matter how strong you are um, it really it's it's uh, you have to have a guardian angels looking after you I was um, able to catch um, a skeleton of a of a bungalow uh, the rest of the construction um, but um, I thought that it will help me to 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 hold on to something but uh, the, the wave was so strong and these waves were 30 meters high waves um, they they were so powerful um, the the earthquake was the third strongest earthquake recorded at that time and it brought it the, just to imagine the power of of of, of this wall of water is like a cement it's like a concrete it's uh, it's not just water it brought 2600 ton ship 3 kilometers inland so the power is tremendous and the, the water is bringing debris of trash of um, doors and trees and all that was crushing um, at me and broke my pelvis at that point um, in four places and suddenly the water started receding and I thought, okay, I will be able to climb o on top of the roof. Mm -hmm. But the next wave came, mm -hmm. and tsunamis came come in waves and uh, often. So and then I was um, drowning under a layer of debris, couldn't come up, couldn't breathe, and started to drink the black water. Mm -hmm. And at that point, actually, I, um, I I let go. I said, if I'm meant to go, I'm meant to go, mm -hmm. and I made a peace with it. And when I did that, actually, I felt like it was, um, uh, it was the most blissful moment in my life mm -hmm. because I felt the merging with the water the, the, and my cells were merging with the particles of the water. Mm -hmm. And in that very moment when I let go, suddenly I was also able to breathe mm -hmm. um, above the debris. Mm -hmm. And it was a metaphor uh, to me. It was like a metaphor in life. Mm -hmm. Because often we go against the wall, against the current, and we cannot get where we want to be. But when we trust universe, mm -hmm. when we get where we are supposed to be. And that was one of the many lessons learned through this experience. But being able to breathe again, the fight wasn't over because the wave was going very much inland. Sorry, it was the wave was going back to the sea. And um, I knew that if I don't hold on to something, there's no point of return being ba uh, out in the sea. So I tried to catch a palm leaf, the first one couldn't, and then it was one more palm tree, and that was the last one. And I was able to hold on to that for uh, eight hours, and many other things were happening during that time, but uh, the most powerful for me was um, holding onto the palm tree and debris all around me. And I've heard children screaming for help and I couldn't go and swim out and help them. And after half an hour, I didn't hear them anymore. And that meant I couldn't hold on. And to me, that day I had no choice to help, but today and every day, myself or others, we do have a choice. And that was a very important lesson to learn, that we have a choice to help others in the big ways, in the small ways, with a smile. And um, it was one of the many lessons and also uh, that's one of the things which drives me every day with Happy Hearts Fund to keep rebuilding schools for children because today I have a choice. I think for me I'm not afraid to go back. I, that's the first thing I did um, also going back to face my fears of because I love water and I didn't want it to be afraid to swim. So I faced my fears of, um, of from the experience. But what's important to know when you, uh, when you can arm yourself with knowledge 
how to recognize early warning signs of a tsunami, how, what to do when tsunami is happening, or other natural disasters. Then you know what to do. Um, and the power of education is not just to transform lives. The power of education is to really save lives. And there's a great story of um, a young uh, girl from England. She was 10 years old during the tsunami, uh, Tilly Smith. And uh, her geography teacher was teaching uh, the class about early warning signs. And he, did, when, he went deeper into the subject than normally. And she remembered. And when she saw the sizzling of the sea and receding of the sea, she told her parents. And she started to be very worried because she recognized this is um, uh, just happening just before the tsunami. So after a while, they started believing her. and. Um, she wore, uh, she told parents, they told the others, and she saved the whole beach, about 100 people, and shows the power of education. You can save your life and life of others. And that's why I, th I feel it's so important, not just in a tsunami from RS, uh, to educate um, the public, but everyone should know, because we all travel mm -hmm. um, to different places, and if it's tsunami, if it's a, a earthquake, smart slides, to know what to do in those circumstances. Um, and. Uh, we have to make it more integrated because school is not enough. Perhaps um, airlines, every airline where they have as their safety um, uh, safety information on the back of the magazines, it should be about the natural disasters. So that way all of us, we are reminded as well. Because if we lear learn uh, what to do when we go to school, primary school, we may forget some of these things. So I think it's the importance of reminders as well. But I feel it will take a um, uh, few entities coming together and reinforcing the message. You know, the beauty about um, all the three hats which I wear is that e each of them, I learn a lot from each. And they also support each other. So my fashion work, because of the platform of my fashion work, I can raise awareness about Happy Hearts One and what I'm doing about Tsunami uh, uh, Awareness Day and so on. And with Happy Hearts Fund, uh, when uh, I've learned about uh, how to manage organization and having sort of a thinking out of a box and those skills um, are great for entrepreneurship. So it all sort of you learn from each something different, but many of these uh, lessons you can apply in the other um, vertical. And it's it's been wonderful and I love each of them and that's the main thing. If you do what you love, then, uh, then you're very lucky. And it's nice to have also diversity because when you do one thing only, it, no matter how much you love it, it becomes too much, I found. So when you have few different things, you start appreciating which, uh, the other. So for example, I used to do just fashion, mm -hmm. and sometimes it got too much. It was uh, just very tiring and, and the same sort of rhythm, intense rhythm. Now, um, we're doing philanthropy is a lot more um, sort of focus on my mind and travel and being with, with children and so on, but a lot of it's the mind work, fundraising and so on. So when I could do my fashion work, it's, it's a little bit more relaxing and I'm able to do, do more creative things. And then when I finish, I'm excited to do meaningful things. So it all helps each other. I think diversity is very important in our life, in, in just even in a work life. I see. So uh, today uh, you are at UN. Yes. Uh, thank you. And so how uh, can UN uh, better work with you, you know, <laughs> to raise the awareness of tsunami. Thank you for the question and thank you first of all for having me here and um, being, being part of the first uh, Tsunami Awareness Day. I feel that it, it, it's important to have few smartnerships, smart partnerships. And um, if it's with organizations, they work in a, um, in a disaster uh, field or if it's those uh, who can raise awareness, like I mentioned, airlines. I feel like they're, they could be great partners to really, because every single airline has their magazine with safety uh, information, and there should be safety about natural disasters. It's very simple. And um, that way, it's, it, we will be prepared. And when we are all prepared, we are safer, all of us together. So more partnerships, smartnerships like this, I feel those would help all of us. To, and the other thing is very important. When we build, build 
in a disaster resilient way it's not worth it to just build uh, in a normal way there is a little bit of a extra cost but that at the end of the day if you have to keep rebuilding because of natural disaster you are losing a lot more money on top you can lose lives so it's not worth it and um so i i think the following the building codes and really um being conscious about what's happening with the environment. There, there, there's a, there is a f increase of natural disasters. If you look at uh, 1970, there were 76 natural disasters recorded. And between 2004 and uh, 2013, there were 369 natural disasters recorded. The increase is there. And we cannot longer just wait and be reactive. We have to be proactive because Mother Nature is, is changing its rhythm. And it's not worth it to, to risk lives of all of us and uh, our loved ones. So I think it's important to, to really take actions and not just to be, you know, sitting down. It's like, okay, it happened then. It may not happen now. It can happen any day at any time. And when it happens, it's too late to do anything. We have to act now. The power of a tsunami wave compares to a concrete building falling on you. Mm. It's not just water. Mm. It is something very, very hard to escape from, hard to f fight. Tsunami wave um, is something what can destroy lives, destroy countries. And it is important to prepare. The beautiful thing with tsunami is that usually there's time. When earthquake happens, there is time. When 2004 tsunami happened, it took 30 minutes to get to the Indonesia coast. It took two hours to get to Thailand. Two hours you can save yourself. Mm. If there are early warning systems, if there's enough education and preparedness, you can save lives. With earthquakes, it's different. When your earthquake happens in a country, it's different. But tsunamis, they're we can there there's time time is the is the most important essence here mm -hmm. so there's there shouldn't be excuse for country not to have warning systems to have education and preparedness mm -hmm. no excuses